the relationship between Russia and Iran is growing ever deeper. On Friday, Vladimir Putin and the new Iranian president, Masoud Peteshkian, held a first in-person meeting in Turkmenistan, where they met at the sideline of another event. Thanks to a wonderful report by my colleague Dick B. Wren, who runs the substack Global Polarity, that is this one here, um, I can inform you about some of these developments that have been uh, taking place. Check out Dick B's substack, um, it will be in the link. He always delivers very uh, timely information that is highly useful. So what happened exactly in this meeting? Basically, Putin highlighted very strongly the importance of Russian-Iranian ties. As I said, the meeting was on the sidelines of an international forum, so this was not a state visit where uh, Peshkinyan would go to, to Moscow and be officially received, um, but nevertheless, it was an important um, first official encounter of the two leaders. Um, besides praising the relationship between the two countries, Putin then also remarked that trade turnover has again grown this year after a decline last year, and he noted the positive overall trend. He also emphasized the alignment between Russia and Iran on various international issue issues, pointing out that both nations often share similar perspectives on global events. He then congratulated Iran on becoming a full member of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization and BRICS, and invited Peseshkian to the upcoming BRICS summit in Kazan, which is going to take place on October 23rd and 24th where another bilateral meeting is planned. Peseshkian, on his part, agreed that relations between the two nations are improving across cultural, economic and social domains, and acknowledged that the supreme leader of Iran encourages the strengthening of these ties. He also added that, our, and I quote, our principles and international positions align closely with yours, and I am hopeful that our country will soon become a full member of BRICS as well. So um, this is a little bit confusing and I'm not entirely sure what he meant, but probably he's referring to um, participating as a BRICS nation for the first time in the Kazan meeting. As far as I understand, all of the um, the accession actually is done and, 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 and over, but of course, since Iran was only um, admitted last year to BRICS, um, Iran has not yet been officially sitting at the same table during a summit meeting, and that will happen in Kazan. Um, and by the way, on a side note, what is also very in interesting in, uh, in Digby's report is that he also writes about, um, about the fact that Iran was not the only country uh, th uh, that was in West and uh, East Asia that was trying to improve relations with, uh, with Moscow. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov said Putin also met briefly with Pakistani President Asif Ali Zardari, during which the two leaders exchanged invitations to visit their respective countries on official visits. Both leaders agreed to strengthen bilateral ties in all areas. Also, according to Peskov, Putin then met with Numan Kurtulmus, Speaker of the Turkish Grand Assembly, and they briefly exchanged views in continuation of the conversation conversation that they had um, previously in Moscow. Um, Putin said he is looking forward to meeting with President Erdogan at the BRICS summit in Kazan. Isn't this fascinating that the that also Turkey is apparently expected to go to the Kazan meeting? I mean, um, apparently um, Turkey has has sent in an, an application to become a BRICS member. I am not entirely sure if that's actually what's what's going to take place. But if if Erdogan actually goes there, um, it just shows that even a NATO member is not necessarily. Um, of the limits for at least some form of association with the BRICS. And the Pakistani comment is fascinating because, of course, one and a year ago, one and a half years ago, there was a, a coup in Pakistan that ousted the former um, leader, uh, the Imra Khan, who was a very strong neutralist, actually, who said, who refused to put sanctions on Russia after the, um, after what happened in February 2022 with Ukraine. And the and the West then actually complained, and we have records of complaints that um, Pakistan's government under Imra Khan was aggressively neutral, and a coup took place a couple of uh, a couple of weeks or months later, that then led to this a new, more U.S. friendly government coming in, and apparently even that 
a more friendly government is now thinking about uh, better ties with Russia. Isn't that fascinating? All of this comes now on the heels of the anyhow, anyhow deepening relationship between Russia and Iran, the two powers which will probably culminate in the signing of a strategic partnership accord. To recap this one, President Putin on September 19 approved the signing of a comprehensive strategic partnership agreement with Tehran, reportedly describing it as expedient and to be signed at the highest levels. The announcement followed a September 17 trip to Tehran by Russian Security Council Secretary Sergei Shoigu, who held talks with his Iranian counterpart Ali Akbar Ahmadian and President Peseshkian. At the time, Peseshkian stated clearly that, and I quote, our goal is to cultivate a partnership that not only withstands external challenges, but also flourishes in a spirit of mutual respect. He also emphasized that separate cooperation can help def deflect sanctions imposed on both Moscow and Tehran. And I think the meeting I'm talking about is, is this one here. Yes, here, here we have the picture of Shoigu meeting um, meeting Peseshkian. And just to emphasize this point, let's remember that in September the US leveled even more sanctions on individuals and companies based in Russia and Iran over the suspected arms deliveries by Iran to Russia, including uh, then sanctions on Iran's national carrier, Iran Air. Britain, France and Germany even cancelled bilateral air service ag agreements with Tehran, restricting Iran Air's ability to fly to the UK, while Germany said it would work towards imposing sanctions on Iran Air, which is then something where that Iran reciprocated, and it's the same kind of nonsense that we have seen with, uh, with uh, banning Russian uh, private air carriers from entering EU uh, airspace. I mean, the same thing is going on with Iran now. Um, it's important though to know that Iran officially says it didn't deliver, especially. Um, missiles to uh, Russia, which is what the allegation is. The allegation was um, put forward also in uh, Radio Free, Free, Free Europe here. US levels more sanctions on Iran after alleged missile transfer to Russia. And the point is it's alleged. So the Iranians are saying, uh, no, 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 wait, wait a second, guys, we are actually not doing that. Um, but again, the, the the U.S. and the Europeans do whatever whatever they whatever they please. So whether it happened or not, it doesn't really matter. The fact is, uh, more sanctions on both countries. So it only makes sense for these two countries to actually cooperate more closely, uh, in order to help circumvent help each other to circumvent um, these sanctions or not circumvent them, but just to develop trade in a framework that just doesn't need to care about the sanctions at all. Um, so all of this uh, is uh, written about by uh, Digby Wren here on this uh, in this uh, Persian Fire article, and you know I really need to emphasize the context of what's happening here, um, which is on the one hand, of course, Israel's expected counter strike on Iran because Iran on uh, the first of October hit uh, several military uh, sites in inside Israel with their uh, rockets, with their uh, missiles, without actually. Um, harming any Israeli service personnel or civilians, uh, although unfortunately one Palestinian died of debris that was falling down from a from one of the rockets that got shot down. But apart from that, nobody died. And, he, and Israel is, of course, furious and is promising a, count, a, a counter strike. And it's uh, yesterday or two days ago released a statement saying the, the counter strike would be precise and devastating. And um, it's everybody's it's anybody's guess what that actually means. And in this context, now we've got this meeting between um, Peseshkian and, and Mr. Putin. And it is pretty clear now that the military to military cooperation um, and the security ties between them, between them are growing and that Mr. Putin has every interest to make sure that Iran um, will not will not fall basically to a uh, Israeli or uh, Israeli-US 
onslaught because that would uh, complicate of course everything in the toward its uh, southern uh, southern border so the talks are that it, that it's actually the russians that are sending um missile systems to intercept interceptor systems to iran at the moment but we don't know what exactly is going on the other context is of course the kazan meeting which is a very very important meeting for um, mr putin because he's going to be the host kazan is in russia and russia is the chair of BRICS at the moment and this is um, a flagship event and a flagship uh, uh, project for for him and it's going to be very important that everybody is there so um, also looking now at the timeline there is of course a, a very high danger that at so that Israel will actually strike at Iran shortly before the Kazan meeting to make it impossible for Mr. Peshkian, Peshkian to actually travel to Russia, which would already be a blow, um, that might be that might be something. I mean, there's a lot of things that could happen that would um, really uh, that would be not devastating to the BRICS summit, but that would make it less impactful than it would otherwise be, because it's um, first and foremost going to be a show of force, especially if then because of an of a widening conflict in the Middle East, also Mr. Erdogan from Turkey would not be able to to travel to Kazan, that would further make it, uh, well, let's say too bad um, from the Russian perspective if that happens. So there is a lot of potential right now in these next two, three weeks to, um, in the next two weeks actually, for things to happen that might change the military situation in West Asia. Uh, the third context here is of course the winding down of the Ukraine war, uh, because it is pretty clear at this point that the United States has more or less decided to, uh, to wind this this uh, conflict down to not give long-range missiles to uh, Ukraine and that the war is basically lost. Um, we also see all of these um, discussions now happening in mainstream media which tells us that it's really sinking in that mil militarily um, Ukraine is basically a is a lost cause unless unless NATO or some NATO countries decide to send in troops and that one seems unlikely so far even though the UK is talking about sending uh, uh, instructors and personnel but real a real intervention a proper NATO intervention which is the only thing that could now forestall the collapse uh, is at this point it seems politically unlikely so all of these things are happening and it seems as if though we are going through a shift of focus from Ukraine to Iran and maybe these, this meeting here and this um, Russian-Iranian uh, uh, collaboration. I don't think this is an alliance. Don't think of it as an alliance, even if there's a cooperation agreement. Um, I, I am significantly certain that there won't be a moment when both of them sign a security treaty saying that an attack on one is an attack on the other in order to do that have an, an article 5 type of military agreement for that the situation is too volatile and there are also too many disagreements actually between uh, uh, Russia and Iran there are disagreements about a uh, trade corridor between Azerbaijan and and uh, and Turkey and, and Armenia in that region, there are other disagreements. Um, so while the two are trying to work together, there are also structural impediments and, and just also insecurities that, in my view, make a um, hard security alliance unlikely. But it is clear that Russia is trying to back up Iran in order to, if possible, prevent a larger war especially a war between um that would that would um, have direct involvement of the united states um russia at the moment is signaling that it is interested in a stable west asia and not another um, potential front that could complicate everything for its foreign policy making uh, and russia is clearly looking toward kazan with this said thank you very much for listening today see you next time